Hello my lovelies, welcome back to another video. My name is Jade <clears throat> and I help people reclaim back their power physically, mentally and spiritually. Now today is going to be quite an advanced yet simple spell on how to really powerfully break a generational curse, so an ancestral curse. And if you suspect that you have a curse but you're not 100% sure, please watch my older video I've done on seven signs that you have been cursed or hexed and that will give you a better idea if you have or not. Um, but if you suspect it and you're not 100% sure, it's no harm in doing a spell anyway, just to be 100% safe. Um, the weird thing with generational curses is sometimes they can go dormant and then sometimes they can have what's called tripwires. So a certain uh, life occurrence might s activate it again. So what I found in my case is whenever I would fall in love or get into a relationship, it would be triggered and it would activate again and then really paranormal strange things would start happening in my life. Um, so this can you know, happen, it could be so many different things because it all depends on what happened with your ancestors, who done it, what energy they had, if it was actually black magic done by purpose, you know, by an intent. Um, if it was just a really strong emotion of murder, you know, anything can cause a, a curse. It's not always um, someone just doing a, a curse onto your family. It can even be like your ancestors murdering someone, like causing murder or rape, or there's so many things, or them even being um, initiated into a cult or a coven or a religious uh, place, etc., by a guru. Um, obviously with the guru being negative and like feeding off their energy. So there's so many things <laughs> that can cause it basically. And you don't really need to figure out why or what it is like, because sometimes, you know, curiosity can kill the cat. So just know that you can fix it. You can banish it and you can break it. Um, and this spell will really help with that. However, sometimes things can like come back in, like if you already have been touched by the darkness, um, it's very easy for you to then get that attachment reactivated. So this is why I highly, highly recommend living a very high vibrational lifestyle in general, um, because that protects you greatly. <laughs> so you need to really activate and alchemize your life to be of a pure light energy. This spell, first off, will actually take a whole year <laughs> to do, um, but it will only require you to do it four times. So this is why it's more advanced because this is, you have to do it every season. So spring, summer, autumn, winter. And for me, I highly recommend doing it on the new moon because you new moons are like, you know, new energy, cleansing. It's banishing the darkness. It's, you know, starting new beginnings. Um, it's the purging moon, <laughs> basically. And uh, it's best for banishment stuff. You know, new moons are best for getting rid of things. Full moons are best for attracting things, bringing things to you. So I highly recommend doing this spell four times a year on the first new moon of every season. The first thing you will need to do is get a small bit of paper. Um, and so it doesn't have to be big, just like rip a corner of paper off that because you're going to burn it basically <laughs> afterwards. Um, and what you need to do is write your surnames. So you'll need to write both surnames from your mother's name and your father's name. Um, it doesn't matter if they're married or whatever, but you know, their original surname. So write both surnames on the piece of paper. Um, and if you, for whatever reason, have a different surname to both your parents, then write that name as well. So what you need to do is then get a little bit of blood <laughs> and you know, it's nothing scary. So don't be, you know, all squeamish and whatever, you know, get over the fear of that sort of thing. It's not black magic. This is white magic. So for women, you can use your menstrual blood and this will be, you know, the easiest way to obviously attain some blood from your body. And the blood is the most, your blood is the most important um, ingredients in the spell because your blood links you to all your ancestors because your blood is linked to your family line. It's the same blood that ran through that person that hexed you or cursed you or created the curse in the first place. 
okay? Even if they were cursed by someone else, it happens to them. So it's their energy within you. This is why you have a very strong connection to your ancestors. This is why you get her <laughs> generational curses in the first place. It's because the bloodline, the bloodline passes down to everyone within that family line. So what you need to do is get a tiny drop of blood and put it on both names, okay? So all the names that you write on the bit of paper, put a little bit of blood on both, so it doesn't have to be loads, just a little tiny bit. So what you need to do is have your blood on both names. If you don't have periods or you can't, you know, you're a man or you have, you know, you've stopped your periods, you're older, um, just use a tiny clean <laughs> pin. So just prick your finger, get a tiny little bit of blood. You don't need a lot. Um, please make sure it's clean and sterile and all of that. You can actually get what the diabetics use that, you know, <laughs> prick your finger a bit more easier. Um, you know, the little poppers, I don't know what they're called, but they're very effective. They're very good and quickly get some blood out. Um, but yeah, you don't need much. So once you've done that, you will then need to burn it. Um, and whatever you use, I mean, I use my little cauldron here. What you just need to do is whatever you're burning it in or get some sort of, you know, heat proof thing that you can, you know, safely burn something in. Um, and you'll need to put a circle of salt <laughs> around it, okay? So just get any sort of salt, you know, rock salt preferably, the more natural, the better. And then just put a circle of salt around the cauldron or around the bit of paper that's burning. Um, if you're able to do it in nature, you could do this in nature. You could, you know, burn the bit of paper on the floor. Obviously, please make sure that it doesn't set anything, you know, on fire. So, you know, not near grass or anything, you know, like that. So whilst the paper is burning, you will then need to, you know, calm your mind and hold your hand over your heart, you know, breathe, really focus. You've got to be focused whilst doing this. So no phone, no people distracting you, like just focus, okay? And what you need to say is I break all curses bound to this bloodline, so mote it be. I break all curses bound to this bloodline, so mote it be. I break all curses bound to this bloodline, so mote it be. And then you can also ask and pray that all love and divine light only is sent upon this bloodline. So you are protected by the love of the Most High and light, divine light only surrounds this bloodline. So once it has burnt, collect the ashes. And then what you need to do, so you can put them in the little bag or even just a little bit of tissue, like whatever is more convenient for you. Um, collect the ashes carefully and then preferably go to a river and throw them in the river and let the river take it away from you. So it takes it into the earth, it takes it away from you. So flowing water is very important. Um, if you don't have a river near you, then you can flush it down the toilets because that's also a good you know, way <laughs> to access flowing fast water. Um, and that will still you know, take it away from you. And once you have done this, you then will need to take off the clothes. So the clothes that you're wearing, instantly take it off, of course, when you're back home, um, and throw them in the wash because you don't want these clothes to be, because they hold that old energy. So you need to instantly put your clothes in the wash. So I put them in, you know, your washing machine or take them to the laundrette you know, quickly dispose of them as quickly as possible. Um, you can even throw away the clothes if you really want to go that step further. Um, just wear like any old baggy clothes and then you can like, you know, <laughs> take them, you know, just throw them in the garbage basically away from your house. Um, and, but you can, it's fine just to wash. So put them in the washing machine and make sure you wash them that day. Um, and then once you have done that, run yourself a bath. So you need to run a bath with a good amount of salt. <laughs> so I'd say about two handful, uh, two handfuls of a, you know, of Epsom salt, pink Himalayan salt I like, or rock salt, again, natural salt, not so much table salt as that's not natural. So get yourself some good quality, you know, bath salt as well. Um, and also another important ingredient will be rue herb. So I have this bag here, <laughs> it's quite a big bag, 
and I've used <laughs> quite a lot of it as you can tell so with rue herb again you can just take like a, a clump of it it's very um you know quite thin you probably can't see there but this herb is very good for like cleansing away negative energy I learned this from a witch um, in Portugal who's a family friend and medium and I had to do this I had to wash myself with this for nine days straight right pain in the ass and um, when I had another hex on me a while back but that's a whole other story so but with this one it's best to seep it like a tea first and then you don't clog up you know your drains and your bath etc and if you don't have a bath you can still do it with this as well because you can pour it over your head um, when you're in the shower so basically what you need to do is brew it like a tea so what i would do is i'll take a good handful of that and i just put it in a you know microwavable bowl so a heat proof bowl um, or flask and i'll put quite a good amount of water so if you were doing this in a shower because you don't have a bath um, make sure it's quite a lot so like a litre roughly you know a big amount of water um, and if you don't have a bath you will need to put the salt with the rue herb so what you can do is brew the herb first um, and add like half hot and then half cold because obviously you don't want to pour burning water all over you so make it lukewarm um, and then basically put a clump of salt in with it and mix it all up okay so make it all mixed and you know mixed in well and then basically you know rinse yourself in the shower um, and then pour the water over your head and so make sure you're getting it on your crown okay so if you're doing it you know just in the shower because you don't want to have a bath or you don't have a bath make sure you get it all over your face you know on the crown the top of your head mainly um, and let it just, you know, go down your body, you know, <laughs> all the way down. Um, and that's basically it. So it would be best to let it just stay on you until you shower next. So basically what you can do is <laughs> just let it go down your body um, and then dry your hair. So yes, you will smell, smell a bit strange. Um, it's not too potent though, it actually smells a bit like hay, like grassy hay, so it's not a terrible smell. Um, so basically just dry yourself off, so pat yourself dry so you have that smell on you because this smell like further protects you. Um, so don't then step back into the shower and rinse it off. Um, and then that's basically it. Or if you have a bath, you can put pour the roux herb, you know, the seeped roux herb into the bath with all the salt, you know, let it mix it all in <laughs> and then completely soak your entire body in the bath. So make sure you go underwater to dunk your whole face, your whole heads, like with the shower, you've got to get it on your crown. So dunk everywhere. <laughs> um, and an extra thing you can do is, you know, rub your feet with some salt. So if you have salt, like at the bottom of the bath, you know, really focus on rubbing the soles of your feet with salt. Um, and then with the bath methods, make sure that you unplug the water and you let the water just drain away. So you have to sit in the bath whilst the water drains away. Um, and then again, don't rinse with normal water. Don't put any soap on you. Like just keep that smell of the rue herb and the salt onto your body, on your flesh. And then pat yourself dry with a towel. Um, and make sure you at least have a stay like this for 24 hours and then you can like have a shower etc like afterwards so this is a very powerful cleansing ritual okay so it's not <laughs> it's simple but it has a lot of steps um so basically that's pretty much it and then if you want to go a step further um you can then light a candle that night to just show that you are bringing in the light. You're bringing in angels of light. You're bringing in spirit guides of light. You're bringing in, you know, all your ancestors. You're giving your ancestors light, basically. And remember, you have to do this four times within the span of a year. Um, and it has to be done in a row <laughs> to like really, you know, work. So you may probably get instantly like good results. Um, it all depends. It's a very, you know, individual thing because it all depends on what sort of um, catalyst you had to trigger that curse in the first place um so basically just 
stay patient, be focused. And in the meantime, light lots of candles. You can do extra rue herbs, salt baths, and you know cleanses if you want. Um, but don't do any extra, you know, burning. Wait for each season, okay? So always set a reminder on your phone or get a calendar and write, you know, find out when the new moon of the first seasons, you know, the first new moon of the season is going to be and then do it like that. And if for whatever reason you can't do it on the actual new moon dates, then bear in mind you can do it three days before or three days after because it will still have that new moon energy. Um, obviously it's best to do it on the day, but if you can't, you can always do it, you know, a few days before or after. So I hope this video helps you. You know, this is a very powerful cleansing spell and um, it's 100% safe. And in the meantime, just <laughs> always ask for your angels and your guides to protect you during and after um, doing any sort of ceremony and ritual. Um, a good idea if you're doing it indoors, your house, like if you are doing the spell, not in nature and you're doing it inside, then cleanse your house um, before and afterwards. Again, you can cleanse your house by putting water and salt together in a bowl and flicking it in every corner of every room and say, I bless this house and cleanse this house from all negative energy, so remote it be. So you can do that before and afterwards so the house is fresh and make sure all the, the windows are open. Um, if you can get some sage, that's a great idea as well. So sage it afterwards. You don't really need to do it so much before as you have the circle to protect you. Um, but sage afterwards, so the energy is fresh and clean and, you know, there's no old debris anywhere. Um, and frankincense is very good as well. So frankincense is the, probably the best incense to use if you want to then light some frankincense afterwards so to then fill your home with that sense um, to further uplift the energy and vibration of it. So let me know in the comments below if you have done anything like this and if you're going to do this spell, please let me know how it goes. Um, and if you want one-to-one -one services, I do actually offer one-to-one -one oracle card readings um, and my own cards I also use um, that I made to see if you have any entity attachments or any curses, etc. So if you are unsure or want more information about your particular you know, issue that you're dealing with, I do also cover that in my readings. I'll put a link in the description box below to all my services and my one-to-one -one readings. Um, I also have eBooks, I have a free third eye eBook. So it's also, you know, that's very important to do when you're on the spiritual path. Um, I also have art services and other things. So please check that out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified with every new video I do. Much love and much light to you. Ahimsa.